Breaking through the silence With glory in the highest The hope of all creation Resting in his mother's arms A song on the horizon Rising through the heavens the long-awaited Savior Come to set his captives free Come to set his captives free Come to set us free
Welcome, welcome, welcome to worship at the Lutheran Church of the Holy Spirit this Christmas Eve. Your presence is warming in two ways. Thank you so much for attending tonight. We are very grateful for your presence. My thanks to our musicians for beginning our service for us. This is a service of Holy Communion, and upon entrance, there was available elements for our communion celebration. If by chance you did not get one, simply raise your hand to attract the attention of one of the ushers, or during the first hymn, perhaps retire and pick one up. You are welcome to do that. This is also a service of candlelight, and the candlelight will be in the middle of the service. It'll be bracketed by verses of Silent Night, and the gospel is read in the middle. When the candles are distributed and the candles are lit, please keep an unlit candle, the only one that is kind of tipped. Anything that is lit remains straight. And then after we are done and the candles are extinguished, if you would hold them for a moment as the candle, wick, uh, candle wax, um, whatever candle wax does. <laughs> Just uh, to keep you well informed, there is another service tonight at 10 o'clock. You are welcome to attend. I'll be there. <laughs> and there's also one tomorrow at 10 a.m., uh, a mere 15 hours from now. That is our Christmas Day service. It will be a one service of carols and lessons. There being no other announcements, would you please stand for the Christmas dialogue? Starlight and song have once again summoned us home to the stable. And so with the beasts of the field and the humble and the high, we have come to gaze on the face of God. Story and supper have once again drawn us home to God's table. And here, through words worn smooth with telling and gifts given life through sharing, may we once again see and know you, Emmanuel, God with us and for us. Christmas child, as we wait now for you, steal softly into our lives. 
still our noisy busyness with the quiet of your coming. Christmas, child, as we look now for you, steal softly into our minds. Transfigure our dull thinking with the colors of your seeing. Christmas, child, as we long now for you, steal softly into our hearts. Enrich our modest loving with the warmth of your being. Christmas, child, as at Bethlehem's stable, steal softly among us now and heal and bless us with your presence. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray. God of light and love, shine upon us this Christmas Eve and in the year ahead. Guide us out of darkness and into your joyous light. May our lives reflect your glorious love, that others may see your Christmas spirit in us each and every day of our lives. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Titus. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions in the present age, to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is it who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. Word of God, word of life. Rising in the world. 
to avoid the jostling of lit candles, I will invite you to remain seated. The good news from Luke, the second chapter. Open our hearts, Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David, called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and the family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place in the guest room. Now, in that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them, and they were terrified. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find the child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom God favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see these things that have taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. And when they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard were amazed at what the shepherds told them. And Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen just as it had been told them. O holy child of Bethlehem, be born in us today. Would you pray with me, please? Lord, our God, our way, our life, our light, keep us forever faithful, trusting solely in your word. Amen. This time of year provides great opportunity to watch Christmas movies. 
You can pick whatever suits your fancy, and with modern streaming services, many Christmas classics are available day and night. Watching them repeatedly is indeed an option. Perhaps if I were to ask you, you would tell me that your favorite is It's a Wonderful Life. Miracle on 34th Street, whichever version. White Christmas, Elf. <laughs> How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Christmas Vacation. A particular version of A Christmas Carol. My favorite happens to be the Muppets Christmas Carol. And of course, there are the Christmas offerings on the Hallmark Channel. But tonight, tonight I wish to revisit a scene from another Christmas classic. Home Alone. I suspect a few of you have seen that one. Yeah. Home Alone 1. The scene I'd like to lift up to you tonight has the movie hero, eight-year-old Kevin McAllister, in church. When Kevin's allegedly scary neighbor, old man Marley, appears next to him. Kevin's initial surprise subsides as Mr. Marley begins a very friendly, upbeat conversation. Mr. Marley explains that he's there in church to hear his granddaughter's choir practice. He feels he can't worship with his fa girl's father, his son, because the two of them have been estranged for some time. After listening sympathetically, Kevin suggests that Mr. Marley call his son. Mr. Marley responds, I'm afraid he won't speak to me. No offense, says Kevin, but aren't you a little too old to be afraid? And Mr. Marley answers, you can be too old for a lot of things, but you're never too old to be afraid. You're never too old to be afraid. Being afraid in our response to it are part of the timeless Christmas message we experience this day. And God's response to this very common human experience of feeling fear and being afraid is the very essence of the Christmas message. Recall the stories of the Christmas gospel. The angel tells Zechariah of Elizabeth's pregnancy and the coming birth of John the Baptist, and the angel's first words were, do not be afraid. The angel tells Mary of her son's birth, and the first words were, do not be afraid. The angel spoke to Joseph, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. And the angels tell the shepherds, of Jesus' birth, and the first words were, do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing good news of great joy to all people. Do not be afraid. In my early years as a parish pastor, I participated in extensive training in the area of neighborhood evangelism calls. They were called invitational calls. They're also known as the cold call. The actual physical knocking on the doors of people's homes who lived in the area around the church that I served at the time. We were trained in the techniques of a visit preparation. Neighborhood maps, remember those? Were provided 
material to record pertinent information, stacks of business cards. We practiced our own individual message. Some would call it an elevator speech. We carried schedules of upcoming events, and we even memorized the names and locations of other churches and worshiping communities so we could reference them should the conversation go that way. We participated in role plays that created real conversations as practice. There was much to learn. There was, however, one action that we were all encouraged to employ without fail. And that was whenever someone did answer the door, we were encouraged to take one step back. This small act of taking one step back presented a non-threatening presence. The body language was communicating a very simple message. You do not need to be afraid. Admittedly, telling ourselves or someone else to not be afraid is easier said than done. To not feel any fear is not our nature. Because when faced with danger or a fearsome situation, our bodies actually release chemicals that heighten sensitivity and response. It's the fight or flight response. Being afraid is something that is not really the problem, being afraid. It's when the sense of being afraid does not move along that it becomes a problem, or when multiple fears come our way and decide to stay, that becomes a problem. When matters make you afraid and seem beyond your control, that becomes a problem. And Mr. Marley was absolutely correct. You're never too old to be afraid. If I was to ask those of you gathered here or, or watching us on our live streaming platform, if I was to ask you what you are afraid of, and I was able to capture and, and write down all those responses on old sheets of newsprint or something like that, how many pages would I need? Two? Eight? Nineteen? Let us consider the manger scene. May I see that picture, please? There it is. That's the manger from our narthex. Here we have figures of people who are gathered around. Using your imagination, what might be their fears? What are they afraid of? besides being knocked over and falling to the floor. The shepherds might be concerned about the message they just heard from the angels and whether or not they'd be believed. They're probably always worrying about making a living. Mary and Joseph must be fearful of all sorts of things. What does the specialness of their newborn son actually mean? Is he in danger? What will Herod do? And the wise men yet to arrive had their own fears and anxieties, else they would not have left by a different way. And yet, look again at yet, in the middle of all those fears is present the Christ child, the Messiah of God. Now imagine that we are all gathered around the manger. Think for a moment what fears and anxieties linger with you this night. Some will be common fears, and some will be unique to you. And yet, the Christ child rests in the middle of all our fears. 
And that is why we have gathered. This service, this place, this message is an opportunity to, to step back, to sit back, and to breathe deeply. No matter our age, our fears come with us tonight. Still, still, the angel's words are with us as well. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy, which will be to all people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us join together in our Christmas affirmation. I believe in God, whose light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never smother it. I believe that on a night like this night in Bethlehem, there was born a Savior who is Christ the Lord. I believe in the Word who has become incarnate, our very flesh and blood, yet full of grace and truth. I believe in the blessed appearing of the salvation of our God, that is for the happiness of all people. I believe in his name as wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace, of the increase of his rule and of his unique peace. There will be no end. The zeal of the God of hosts will do this. This I surely believe. With wonder and thanksgiving for Christ coming into the world, we pray for the church, the life of the earth, and the whole human family. 
Your infinite love is born to us this night. With the choirs of angels, the church proclaims the good news. Send us out as messengers of the hope that has come to all people. Christmas child, bring, bring in your light and, and your love. You are pleased to dwell with your creatures and the whole earth sings for joy. Renew the splendor of creation from the smallest cell to the widest galaxies. Guide us to be wise stewards of your gifts for the sake of generations to come. Christmas child, bring, bring in your light and your love. Your authority is over the nations. Break the rod of oppression in every land and free all people from fear. Bring peace where there is war, compassion where there is suffering, and healing where there is disease. Christmas child, bring, bring in, in your, your light and your love. You cherish those who are most vulnerable. Protect infants and children. Bless those who care for them. Watch over women giving birth, attend to the dying, and relieve any who are in pain, especially those we name silently before you now. Shelter refugee families and those who have no home. Christmas child. Bring in your light and your love. Your loving kindness embraces everyone in need. Help anyone for whom this season is lonely or joyless. Comfort those among us or known to us who are experiencing distress of body or mind, missing loved ones or grieving. Christmas child. Bring, bring in your light and your love. You welcome those who have died into the joyous light of glory. We give thanks for the saints of every time and place who have praised you with lives of faith and humility inspire us by their example to love you by serving others christmas child bring, bring in your light and your love pondering the mystery of eternal love made flesh in christ jesus we commend all for whom we pray to the mercy of god amen the peace of the lord be with you always please share a sign of peace with one another Peace be with you. We now take a moment in our service to say thank you. First and foremost, we thank God for the greatest gift of all, the birth of Jesus Christ, but also thank you to all of you for the response that you give to God's gifts to us. There, if you wish to leave an offering, there are plates located at the back of the sanctuary by the doors, as well as a variety of giving options online. But again, we thank you for all that you do to allow us to keep our ministry and our faith vibrant in the world also want to take a minute before we go to the musical offering to just address our folks who are worshiping with us on zoom now would be an excellent time to gather your bread your wine or your grape juice if you want to participate in communion at home as we do so here and i recognize we may have some visitors hopefully your family or friends filled you in but these are the cups there is a wafer on top the juice is on another side. I recommend taking the wafer part first so you don't spill your cup trying to get the other part out. Um, not that I know from personal experience, um, but also so that you know, after we go through the communion liturgy, we will all take the elements together at one time. With that, I look forward to our musical offering. Let 
let us call and adore him, rest in his peace, and bow before him. Sing of ye people, the Lord Almighty reigns. Sing every creature of stand if you are able. May the God of silent nights be with you. May the God of herald angels be with you. Open your hearts to the one born in the little town of Bethlehem. May Emmanuel come to abide in our hearts. Join all believers in singing of our joy this night. May our voices blend with those of the angels and shepherds. God of abundance, receive and bless these gifts we have offered. Join our hearts with the song of the angels and gather us at your table of celebration. Strengthen us to share with all the world the abundance of your grace upon grace, poured out in Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. 
This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Christ is our light, and we will join the angels in singing the good news. Christ is our life, and we will join the disciples in telling the story. Christ is our promise, and we wait for the joy of his return. And when all time and history become silence, we will be gathered with our sisters and brothers from every corner and moment of every universe to join the angel choirs and forever singing your praises as we dance to the table of wonder and grace. God in community, holy in one. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Come to the table of peace. You may be seated. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. God, our Redeemer, you have fed us at this table with gifts of grace, truth, and life. As you have gathered us in joy, send us forth as messengers of your peace. Make us shine with the good news of your glory, born to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who sent the Holy Spirit to Mary, proclaimed joy through the angels, sent the shepherds with good news, and led the Magi by a star. Bless you this day through the word made flesh. Amen.
Joy to the world, the Lord has come. We have celebrated the wonderful gift of God this day. As we go, may we share the good news with all we meet. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Glory to God in the highest.